We grabbed my father's flashlight and hurried behind Robin as he chased Leroy into the doorway that led to the basement of the building, the same place where he had taken us to see Batman's body. As James and I marched forward into the darkness, I was still in a daze and not believing everything happening was real. How did our world get flipped upside down into this crazy reality filled with creatures, monsters, and supernatural forces that we had never seen before? And who's going to believe us? Who's going to believe that Miss Hilda was more than just a creepy old woman? That she was actually a sorceress given the task of finding a warrior? that would stop the spread of an evil force. Who's going to believe that one of my best friends, someone I had considered family, wasn't just a cold-hearted killer, but really something that wasn't human and was connected to this evil force that lived in the darkness? And who's going to believe that it was my destiny to stop him because honestly I didn't believe it myself I felt like I was drowning trying to make sense of everything these are the times that make me believe if God actually exists because life only seems to get more and more difficult for us as the days go by as we walk deeper into the darkness, carefully down the slippery wet stairs, I looked at James, who didn't seem to be that scared at all. It actually seemed like he was excited, which made me wonder if I was tripping or stuck in a dream, waiting for someone to wake me up. James turned to me, looking at the crystal dangling from my neck. Does it tingle or anything? Why would it do that? I replied. I don't know. I mean, I thought it would give off some kind of energy if we were going to use it to fight whatever old Miss Hilda was talking about. James said, No, it doesn't tingle. I told him as I wondered myself, what would the crystal do when the time was right? As we continued walking, gunshots rang out. We paused, looking at one another, not even bothering to ask, because we both knew what we heard. And then, without warning, a loud eerie sound exploded out like the painful yells of a creature echoing from the depths below James turned to me are you ready hell no and why are you so calm and excited by all this I said as James stopped and turned to me We've lived our entire lives in fear, Ricky. Scared of the gangs, scared of getting shot, scared of the cops, scared because it feels like everything in this world was created to make our lives difficult. But now, we have a chance to change all of that. Right now. And it starts with this. He pointed to the crystal. So, do you remember the words on the paper old Miss Hilda gave you? Hesitant, I looked at him. I mean, kinda, I said, really not even knowing if I did or not. Well, I do. So let's go over it together and keep going. James pulled out the paper 
and we started over the words as we continued deeper and deeper into the building. Arriving back at that horrible smell, back at the buzzing of the flies, as we marched deeper and deeper when James stepped on something. It was a gun laying on the ground, covered by the dark, dirty, green mayonnaise. That's Robin's gun, James said, speaking with so much confidence. I wanted to give him the crystal because if I'm honest, I wasn't ready to deal with any of this. That's when James turned to me like he could feel all the doubt oozing from my body. He smiled and said, I believe in you, Ricky. I always have. Ever since we were little, you've always been the bravest. That's why you jumped that gate to grab the softball and met Miss Hilda. This was always meant to happen. I stood frozen, not knowing what to say, because I was filled with so much doubt. And that's when a voice rumbled from the shadows. Hey guys, what's going on? We turned and there was Leroy standing on the edge of the darkness. James turned to me as we both looked at the crystal, which didn't shine, glow, or do anything. What are you guys doing? Leroy said as James stepped up. What did you do with Robin, Leroy? Leroy smiled, giggling, then spoke. You want to go see? He's nice and ready. Come on, I'll show you. Leroy walked away as James and I followed him deeper downstairs, going back into that place that choked us with its horrible smell as the buzzing of the flies echoed in our ears. As we turned the corner, James and I stumbled as we saw Robin's body ripped to shreds, scattered across the dirty ground, surrounded by trash. Shocked, my eyes wandered into the shadows at what looked like images of other people standing in the darkness. Leroy turned to us. See, we made him nice and pretty. James and I both looked like we wanted to vomit, but we knew it was too late to be weak. Leroy, what happened to you? Why are you doing all of this? Why did you kill Robocop, Batman, and Robin? I asked. Leroy smiled because of what they did to us. They made us live in fear, treated us like scum, like dirt, like the world does, never caring, never wanting anything but to push us away deeper and deeper into where nobody could find us. And that's when a voice from the darkness spoke to me and asked me if I was tired of being weak, tired of being scared, tired of being alone, and ready for revenge. And I said yes. And now, I want you to come and join so we can all be together and show this world Whatever you push into the darkness will come back and consume you in the light. James and I stood quiet, waiting, thinking. I didn't know what to say because honestly, I felt the same way he did. This world had always treated us this way. These cops never cared and we all felt alone. But that's when James spoke. This isn't right, Leroy. It isn't right. And we're here to stop you. Leroy grinned 
shook his head and started walking away as he turned back to us. I'm sorry, you guys, but I can't let you stop me. I can't because we are creatures. And that's when someone else stepped from the shadows. It was another person. It was another Leroy. He continued speaking. We crawl. James tapped me on the shoulder as another one peered behind us. We climb. And then another. And we consume. And another. And another. And another. Until we were surrounded by evil Leroy's who had claws instead of fingers and long razor sharp teeth and they were all covered in this slime the dirty mayonnaise scared stiff James and I backed up against one another as the creature started closing in on us all of them mumbling we crawl we climb and we consume James turned to me. Ricky, it's time. Still filled with doubt, I grabbed the crystal, held it firmly, when suddenly, gunshots rang out. We turned and saw Mr. Wade charging forward with Lucy, leading a group of several other dogs, barking savagely as he fired a shotgun with other guns dangling off his shoulders. Mr. Wade yelled, Y'all killed my dogs. Y'all killed my babies. James and I took off running as Mr. Wade continued firing while Lucy and the other dogs attacked. We ran up the stairs, but as we turned the corner, we were stopped, surrounded by more evil Leroy's peering from the shadows until we had nowhere to go. James turned to me again. Ricky, use the stone. I took the crystal off my neck, holding it in my hand again, and began chanting. We are the warriors of the light. We stand against the darkness in weakness or in my and that's when one of the creatures smacked the crystal from my hand sending it crashing to the ground and shattering into pieces smothered by fear I didn't know what to do as the creatures shoved James and I to the ground snarling and laughing at us continuing their chants we crawl, we climb, we consume. We crawl, we climb, we consume. I cried as they grabbed James, growling. We consume, we consume, we consume. Struggling to hold on to him, James slipped from my grip as tears streamed down my face. James! James, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I yelled out as they pulled him away from me. But in the midst of all of this fear and chaos, there was a calm that covered his face as James looked at me and said, I still believe in you, Ricky. I always have. And I always will. And that's when I saw a small piece of the shattered crystal sparkling brightly in James' hand. Now, just believe in yourself. And that's when the creatures grabbed me from the ground. But not before I could snatch up a piece of the crystal. And forgetting about all the things I feared. 
I had no choice but to finally believe in myself. And I started once more. We, we are the warriors, are the warriors of, the light. of the light. We stand, we stand against stand the darkness, the dark, the dark, in weakness, in weakness, in weakness or in light. In light. In light. We, fight we fight in the shadows, in the shadows. In the shadows. We fight on death's door. Our, death. our blood our shines shine bright. Shine bright. Because, because life, because within, because the life the dark, within the dark, in the dark, in the dark, within the dark. My eyes floated to James. As he finished, shall perish, shall perish, by, perish by the holy blade of, of, of light. That's when a massive explosion of light filled the area, and the creatures screamed and groaned as I noticed a bright glow covering my body like armor and a massive sword of light in my hand. Ricky! I turned and saw James. The creatures had released him and he was covered by a glow also and holding a glowing weapon, an ax made of pure light. Let's finish this. James said firmly, as we rushed at creatures, they charged us, but we weren't kids anymore. Now, we were warriors, filled with centuries of knowledge and skill, and we were born for this day. We swung our weapons until there wasn't a creature left. Their bodies disappeared dissolving into the darkness. I turned and saw Mr. Wade being led by Lucy rushing toward the stairs. He mumbled, I told you Lucy, I told you we, go, we were gonna get him. James and I followed them upstairs. As we moved, James turned to me with a smile and even though we didn't say anything, we both knew what we were thinking. As we arrived outside, our weapons had disappeared and the tiny pieces of crystal had grown into larger stones inside of our hands. The police and fire department came and removed Robin's body. As word around the projects spread, everyone said Robin died killing the mountain lion that was hiding down below, but not before it had killed Leroy also. A few days passed before I went back to old Miss Hilda, who obviously had the door open, waiting for me as she sat on the couch smiling. The one candle still shining so brightly. Welcome, young warrior, welcome. Still in disbelief, all I could say was, you knew this would happen, didn't you, Miss Hilda? Miss Hilda smiled and said, no, Ricky, I didn't. The only thing I believed is that you had someone that believed in you more than you believed in yourself. I shook my head and grinned. So where do we go from here, Miss Hilda? Miss Hilda smiled again. Anywhere your heart and mind will take you, Ricky. Anywhere your heart and mind will take you. Deep down in the darkness, somewhere in the projects below, a form of large larvae and egg vibrates and shakes as a clawed hand breaks through from inside. An eerie voice mumbles, echoing. We crawl, we climb, we consume. 